John Marshall was the fourth Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. He came on to a court which lacked energy, weight, and dignity. Those were the words of the first Chief Justice, John Jay. But after Marshall was Chief Justice for 34 years, no one would ever say that again. America needed a judicial armature to support it. It needed legal rulings in favor of the binding power of contracts and in favor of a national market, and those were supplied by the Marshall Court. Marshall changed the court in a number of ways. I think the first was his geniality. Marshall liked people and people liked him, and this helped him hugely in hurting all the cats who were his fellow justices on the Supreme Court. He strengthened the court. He issued unanimous opinions, often delivered by him, sometimes by fellow justices. Marshall built consensus on the Supreme Court in several ways. He did it through deference to the opinions of fellow justices when they happened to know more about particular areas of the law than he did. Another factor in Marshall's leadership of the court was that he was always the smartest man in the room. His intelligence was slow moving. It wasn't quick. It took him a while to get going. But when he did get going, he was almost implacable. He also laid down a pattern for judicial interpretation. The two tools he used were to follow the words of the Constitution or to consider the intentions of the framers when they wrote those words. What problems were they trying to solve? What dangers were they anticipating? He used an originalism of words and an originalism of intentions. And those were his techniques for 34 years. The case we all learned about in school was Marbury versus Madison in 1803 in which the court strikes down a portion of a law passed by Congress. This is the Judiciary Act of 1789. What was striking about Marbury is that it was a 9,000 word decision, about 8,500 words of which were a lecture to the Jefferson administration saying, now, we're not going to give it to William Marbury because the law under which he has appealed is in fact unconstitutional, but shame on you. The one time that Marshall dissented on a case of constitutional import was a case involving bankruptcy law. The name of the case was Ogden v. Sanders. This case involved the contract clause of the Constitution, Article I, Section 10. This was one of the most important clauses in Marshall's mind. In Fletcher v. Peck, he had called the contract clause a bill of rights for the people of the states. Not the first 10 amendments, not freedom of speech or freedom of the press or no warrantless searches, but Article I, Section 10, prohibiting states from impairing the obligation of contracts. Marshall got in a lot of trouble for his opinions on supremacy when he was arguing the supremacy of federal courts over state courts or of state legislatures. Fletcher v. Peck struck down a law passed by Georgia. Dartmouth v. Woodward struck down a law passed by New Hampshire. McCullough v. Maryland struck down a law passed by Maryland. Osborne v. Bank of the United States struck down a law of Ohio. When Marshall is in his groove, he writes at length. His famous opinions are 8,000, 9,000, 10,000 words long. His opinion on the law of treason in the treason trial of Aaron Burr is 25,000 words long. When he read Marbury v. Madison aloud, it took him three hours to get through the whole opinion. One of the lawyers before the Supreme Court, William Wirt, who would later become Attorney General, said that Marshall's mind was like the Atlantic Ocean Everybody else's minds were like ponds. John Marshall dies in 1835. And over the next 25 years, the Supreme Court loses a lot of prestige. The second law passed by Congress that the Supreme Court strikes down 
is in the Dred Scott decision in 1857, when the Supreme Court overturns the Missouri Compromise. This is an important step towards the Civil War, and after Chief Justice Roger Tawney, the man who wrote that decision, died, Senator Charles Sumner said that judicial baseness had reached its nadir in that decision. If Tawney had not been preceded by John Marshall and his court, perhaps the Supreme Court might never have recovered its prestige. Mm -hmm.